Hello, I'm the DM, and you're listening to Campaign 2 of Fools and Flagons, The Tales of Archeron. We livestream on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash fools and flagons. That's fools, the letter N, flagons, every Friday at 7 p.m. Central for Tales of Archeron and 6 p.m. Central for Storm King's Chaos. If you'd like to join our community and talk not just about D&D, but other games as well, consider joining our Discord. The links can be found below in the description. Do you like us? Like, really, really like us? Consider donating to our coffee page at ko-fi.com forward slash fools and flagons. The links can also be found in the description. Donations and memberships are never required and always appreciated. We have no gated content for members only, and all proceeds go straight back into making Fools and Flagons an even better experience, and it helps to keep the podcast alive and well. Are you ready for some D&D? All right then, grab your drinks and raise your glasses. It's time for the Fools and Flagons podcast. Grab your drink and raise your glass. Make a mess some ass dungeon master has no chance it's time for fools and flagons raid the dungeons and slay the dragon sharpen your sword and prep your wagons there'll be death and tons of magic it's time for We are live with Pez beating everybody in arm wrestling, apparently. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, never going to live that down. Nope. I mean, I beat him last time. So, uh, happy affiliate anniversary, Revenge I guess, man. that yeah. I didn't know was happening. And is, Wait, what's yeah. the anniversary? Uh, of us becoming affiliate. So, oh, okay. yay. Making bang. Yay! We're not. <laughs> anyway... Uh, hello everyone, we're desperate. welcome to, we're desperate, please. <laughs> welcome to it's Fools subscribe. and Flagons, a tabletop campaign made up entirely by me, where my players do dumb and sometimes really smart shit, and, uh, I gotta try to make sense of it in quick fashion. Wait, oh shit, they did something smart, uh, panic! Yeah, yeah, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> uh, you've had a few moments. A few. A few moments. A few. <laughs> uh, and tonight, we are continuing on with the Tales of Archeron. We do want to thank you for your follow subscriptions and bits on Twitch. We do apologize that we cannot verbally recognize them on stream for the sake of not interrupting the story, but your support of us is always appreciated. And someone eventually here will be watching chat and not paying attention. That found him. Right, right. That guy. <laughs> Uh, we do want to give a really big thank you to Martyr, Gelatinous Cube, and Cargo for being Tavern patron members over on our coffee page. Links can be found down below in the description. Your support of us is very much appreciated, and we cannot thank you enough. So, we have shortened the announcements down a bit. I keep forgetting that that's a thing. I feel like I'm slacking, but I put all of that in front of, like, the pre-recorded shit now, so... Yep. Yeah. This feels weird, doesn't it? <clears throat> little bit, but it's nice, because now we get to get started. Anyone else have anything that they would like to say or talk about? Nope. Um, another fun fact. Did you know that... I don't know. I, I lost it. Look, last you, week was you Red Hood my movie. hopes and dashed them expertly, sir. You're welcome. Is that my payback for leaving you on a cliffhanger the last time? Yes. You know, honestly, I think it'd be a smart idea to do, like, um, Pez Facts of the Day at the start of every <laughs> you know, I'm game. Down for that. Just look at the most fucking random fact oh, and be like, oh, by the way, Pez, where's the random fact of the day? <laughs> and now it's time for Silly uh, Facts with Pez, the part of the show uh, where Pez uh, says a silly fact. <laughs> going down. Um, did you know that Abraham Lincoln was a bartender? Actually, no. no. There you go. Okay, well, we we have just now started a brand new tradition, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Pez facts. April 26th. Eh. 
2024. That's 2004. Good job, me. <laughs> How do you? Yeah. We're we going. I don't have an eraser. <laughs> Zeke was still a fetus 20 years ago. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Tiny. I was born in 97, you idiot! Tiny. Freaking <laughs> baby. Anyway. Wait, am I the youngest here? Yes. He's so happy for you. I was born in 96, my guy. What do you mean? Fuck off! Listen, Zach is Small. like 27 days younger than me, and I never let him forget it. <laughs> he does. Child. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the gelatinous cube and all our other young members when I need them to make me look old? Man. Uh, sleeping. Yeah, that's fair. Pretty sure Metal's asleep at this point. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Anyway, uh, grab your drinks and raise your glasses. It's time for Fools and Flags. Let's get this shit done. That was loud. Pure laugh. It's laugh, but not, pure. Not sponsored. Piss. Not sponsored. Peepus. <clears throat> Peppus. My drink of choice is interesting today. It is uh, yes. Diet Mountain Dew and Anime Girl Thighs. Oh, oh. oh. like interesting. Together? As yeah, well. orange and lime. I thought okay. it was a mojito that you were drinking, only it's more spicy than a mojito. No, if I have alcohol, I'll go to sleep. That's Fair. how my brain is right now. No, Simi will take a nap right right here. <clears throat> hey, take a nap right here. <laughs> take Good night. Okay, well. We need a little oh, bit of off here. No, I like the fairy cottage music. That's a crying shame. Oh, I'm so, crying. <clears throat> last time on the Tales of Archeron, the Tempest made a difficult decision and decided to slay the innocent, peaceful creature known as a Quetzali, despite the warnings that it was considered bad luck. <clears throat> the potential profit of completing their quest early to fix Brick outweighed the potential negative outcome. Sure enough, the creature was slain and the necessary crystals harvested from its corpse, much to Mariko's dismay. The Tempest were afflicted by a powerful curse upon the death of the Quetzali, though their consciousness... There's... Consciousness. Blech. Hmm? Oh, I was saying typo? Oh, no, I just can't speak words. Uh, mm. Though their consciences were partially relieved when Zahn healed the creature, saving it from death. Luckily for the, is, is, you know your your conscience, that. like your your conscience. Oh yeah, yeah. That's oh, why that's... I was kind of struggling with, uh, you know, your little Jiminy crickets. There you go. Just call it that. Though their Jiminy crickets were partially relieved <laughs> when Zon healed the creature, saving it from death. Luckily for the party, Zon is very good at removing things from people, curses being one of them. The Tempest returned to Shen Shei's temple to rest for the night, let their anger caused by the mysterious shadow lapse, and to plan their next move. After sending a message to Borgreer and receiving no reply, they decided to use Brick's gateway ring to quickly return them to Chichimek, only to find the aftermath of battle strewn about the area. The outer structure had been destroyed with small smoldering fire still lingering, even their wagon had been targeted, the wheels broken, <laughs> among other damages to the exterior. Their faithful beast of bird and Cassie was nowhere to be seen. We rejoined them now as Oakley, the head guard of the Solar Blade stationed at Chichimek, escorts them within Chichimek itself to explain what had transpired. So, Talk. <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, it's... Uh, Yes, it is nighttime. Um, so you can hear the uh, the crickets and the hum of insects disappearing as you are led down the uh, large step. Moriko, I'm sorry, you. Mm -hmm. This is your first time here. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> what you see is a uh, vast open space in the jungle. Uh, give me just a moment to grab this image for the. So is it nighttime? I thought we went in the morning. I, I, I put note big circle nighttime so I know. Night time. Okay. I had to check. <laughs> it was like I thought we woke up. And no, because you, like, well, you were about response. to. You thought about waking up and all, but then you didn't. You went to bed and or uh, you decided that no, we're we're going now. Um, okay. Okay. Here we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. 
Uh, so, Mariko, uh, you see a uh, very, what used to be decorative yeah. and ornate pillars around, uh, surrounding a long, deep stairway into the ground. Many of these have been knocked over and reduced to rubble. The large central one still remains, uh, but pieces of it have been uh, blown off. Um, and all around the area, there's uh, you can see the remnants of burnt trees, um, patches of grass that have just been obliterated, where it's just dirt and ash now. So, um, God, I gotta get so many images just because she hasn't been here before. Oh my God! Hey, you don't have to worry about it too much. No, I do it. No, I, no. I, I need you to know. <laughs> you need to visualize a visualization. He said. A lot of big words. Here. All right. Uh, the uh, Kwautli of the Solar Blades, the commander there, uh, his armor is marred with ash and uh, what appears to be older blood, and the bright plumage of his headdress and the rest of his attire seems to be... Uh, relatively recently battle-worn. So he leads you down the steps. He's going by himself. The rest of his um, soldiers remain up on the surface to either continue patrolling or just guarding the entrance. I'm assuming you all are following him, but I hate to assume. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm yes. looking something up that might be relevant. <laughs> You're fine. So, down into the deep, dark, down, deep, down. Uh, where the four of you, Brick, Kasumi, Pez, and Zahn, have been before, where there had been roaring furnaces and workers ever-present, uh, many of the forge fires have died down. Um, there's rubble on the interior as well, where either the structural integrity started to fail by whatever was happening on the surface, or perhaps uh, some of the fighting even uh, made it down under underground as well. The steady ringing of hammers is not there. There's low murmuring and the sound of scraping as you are led to the antechamber where you had talked with Chamale and uh, Borger before. You see the workers are uh, trying to clean up as best they can. They're pushing rubble out of the way. Uh, they're clearing the uh, walkways. Uh, some are dismantling ruined furnaces to make room or to salvage what they can. Uh, many of the workers in here are also bandaged and um, just battle-worn. Is there anything any of you would like to do or as uh. Oakley is walking you through here? Gonna... Guys, this is some poor taste. Um, can I get his attention? I don't know what I need to say. I don't even remember. He, he speaks common, that's right. I'm not crazy. Yeah, so you, you get his attention and he stops for a moment and turns back to look at you. Yes. This is very bad timing, I understand. But, um... We... We're probably going to help with this situation, but I need something repaired before we go out. Is there anyone who might be able to do some quick repairs on something? This is not for me to decide. Okay. I but while this, this is <clears throat> while this is happening, we're stopped. Brick is going to kind of walk to the side. Is there any marks that would indicate? Um, uh, What's the word? Deliberate uh, damage inflicted. Uh, it's fairly easy to see. Some of the bigger um, marks and areas, you can see that the, the parts of these stone furnaces, um, they are charred black. Um, there's some residue left behind, either by a physical interaction or something arcane. Uh, you would have to get a little bit closer to do a more in-depth investigation but uh, none of this seems accidental. 
So it's it's mostly scorch marks. There's no like, um, doesn't look like or anything was bludgeoned or slashed um, or anything. If you're staying at a distance, make a perception check. If you are wandering away to get closer look, I need no, to he, make... he walks up to something he sees and investigation like... check, please. <clears throat> Uh, who today? This one. It's pretty good. Uh, investigation. Thank you, Shinshay. That's gonna be, uh, 23. 23. Uh, you definitely see, um, it may not... Let me think about the word it is. You definitely see more than just arcane or explosive damage. You... Uh, you see where things have impacted. Uh, you see gouge marks from bladed weapons that may have hit. But especially with, with that role, none of that seems to be overly purposeful. You're, you're, you're seeing a critical part of the machinery, but that's not where this mark is. There's a mark on that one over there, but over here it's just on the pillar uh, supporting it but the pillar's thick and it didn't do that much damage and there's a little chunk. That's not the part that you would want to hit to sabotage this particular bit of machinery. Uh, the best that you can ascertain is a lot of the damage in here was just a, a casualty of the combat, that it was not the goal to destroy. Do most of the markings look like they were made by weapon or possibly by... Um like organic like a monster or something it's difficult to tell uh there's maybe if you had been there right after the fact but a lot of the rubble and uh believe it or not a fair bit of the damage has already been um not so much repaired but cleaned up yes cleaned up pushed to the side um you see pock marks cuts chunks missing but the the pieces that were taken from that have been moved elsewhere um yeah, yeah. it definitely yeah. seems like whatever conflict happened moved into the underground area as well okay uh, at that point then brick's gonna reconvene with the group and just um look at the the captain please lead on kind of he had been speaking to Zahn, and as you kind of come from the side, he gives you a quizzical look, but he turns and moves on. Uh, on through the forge area, and turning left down a hall, uh, the long hallway that you had been before, he leads you to the room, pounds on the stone wall twice with his fist with a deep reverberating boom, and the door slides open, and he gestures for the five of you to head inside. Six, sorry, hamburgers there too. <laughs> Heading in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you all head inside, and sitting in his chair as you had last left him is Jamali. And he is wounded. His uh, mechanical right arm is not there anymore. You can see the damaged and shredded part, maybe four or five inches from the shoulder, is just there. There's nothing attached to it. Uh, his right eye is also completely bandaged up the whole side of his face. Um, he looks up at the five of you. Hello. I see we have someone new. And his one eye is looking at you, Moriko. But if they are in your company, I assume she too is trustworthy. As any of us. It seems you survived. And... I assume with your return, you have everything already. We had to take a, um, less than ideal shortcut in 
our endeavors, but we have what we needed and we have repaired any damage that we were unfortunately unable to avoid. Um, Zahn's just going to look over Kasumi slowly. <laughs> Sorry, again, I'm, I'm having to remember that all of this stuff that was from before, I, I have to explain to, to Mariko. I'm so sorry. Uh, sitting before you is a very, very old uh, turtle. Um, as before, his, his right arm seems to be just missing, but where... You would expect to see a stump or some sort of bandage. There's just a bunch of mechanical uh, metal parts that are just jutting out from his shoulder um, that don't seem to be connected to anything anymore. Uh, Who's the dwarf that's usually with him? Borgir? Borg yeah, Borgir, Borgir, Thunderbender. Do we see um, him? You do not see him. Brick is going to... I'm sorry, I, I meant to, to speak up there real quick. Um... He kind of looks at you, Brick, and tilts his head slightly. We must take care for shortcuts can lead to pitfalls. It was a calculated risk. And he'll kneel down in front of him, in front of his chair. It is good to see you breathing, creator. Please, what has happened? As you can all see, we were attacked. This but. location is secret to but a few. Many know it exists, but where is not so easy. Let me guess, were they wearing purple robes? Yes. Hmm. There was one who seemed to lead. Zephros? I'm guessing. He did not say a name. Let purple me guess, fireballs from skin. the sky. Is he called our meteors from the sky? This I do not know. I was here. Hmm. But you, lady, and he looks to you, Mariko, who are you? Uh, you can call me Mariko. I am a Montecato Chamale. Has Mariko heard of him through the you okay. you would have heard you would have heard and not cared but yeah. you definitely would have heard uh this okay. is the master goldsmith of the aslan empire i have heard the name to be honest never quite thought much of it but it is nice to put a face to the name you see a slow grin come across his his like tough old leathery face it is refreshing to be met so plainly well i'm not very good with people when you live among elementals you you're not very good with people he he lifts his other gauntleted hand i mean to say it is refreshing to not be lauded as higher or better. <laughs> Just like this. So, a question. Or what's wrong with the eye? Do you still have it? It's not cut out or anything? The eye and my arm were severely damaged do not fret for me i he and again another grin comes across his face i have plans 
Well, Zon's gonna walk him to cast heal on him anyways. <laughs> you you cast heal on him, and you see him take in a deep breath. I do appreciate, but that will not be enough to fix my damage. Every little bit can help. And I hate what? to continue giving bad news. It is both bad, but with a bit of good. And I hope you will forgive me if I overstepped. And uh, he'll kind of look to the left of where he's sitting, and you hadn't seen it before, but there was a, an attendant standing there. Um, they seem to be wearing the general blacksmithing garb, a thick leather apron. Um, he lifts a hand and kind of makes a little gesture. Please, bring the tetel yolili. Do I know what that means? Uh, you know it means soul stone. Oh. Your beast of burden fought hard. Mm. But they did not make it. Mm. What? How? Tell me. What happened to her? The one you call Cassie was above. And when the intruders came to attack... It defended your home with vigor. We all greatly appreciated its efforts. She took down many. And for that bravery, we performed... And he pauses for a moment to think of the right words. A ritual that we have not seen in time. And he kind of seems to be struggling to think of the right words for it. Um, and at that point, the uh, servant comes back out. Where's my mouse? There's my mouse. <clears throat> and you see on a uh, very beautiful, ornate pedestal, a glass sphere with a bright glowing green emerald nestled in the center that seems to pulse slightly, almost like a heartbeat. Your companion's soul is safe here. This device is unique. If you wish for us to release her, we will. But if you wish to let her still serve, it may be put into the wagon and she will become the wagon. Zahn doesn't really know what's going on with that. <laughs> this is so, moving castle. So, like, this is so far out of his realm of expertise. He's just kind of like, hmm. we'll see what Pez says, because he knows yeah, Brick, what's going on. <laughs> Brick just looks at Pez, and I don't mean to put any pressure on you, but I feel like this is your decision. She I think. is safe, and the decision does not need to be rushed. Let's fix up everywhere, make sure everyone's alive and okay, and we'll, we'll be with, we'll see what we can do with Cassie once everything else is fixed up and repaired. You're muted. Yep. We might also want to check our cart. There was some damage. Agnes. I don't know if anyone got in. Uh, Brick's going to pop mortar in, and he's going to go fly and check out the cart. Zahn grabs Brick, pulls him close. Find Magnus first. 
<laughs> Is Magnus still there? I thought he was back with um, the other pets. In Zakat. Oh, I didn't remember if we brought them all with us or not. They're in the cart. Okay. Um, as Mortar f flies out, um, Jamale continues further. Unfortunately, Borgreer and Gemini were taken, and our scryers cannot find them. You have you managed to capture any of these intruders alive? No. You have any of their bodies and someone who could speak to them before I skin them for hurting us. I would prefer you did not do something so crude. Well, I can think of two places they would have taken them. Go on. Mm -hmm. Chances are, if they haven't been run out completely out of the mountains yet, they might have taken them there. But I think it's far more likely they might have taken them north. When you are homeland. Yes. There's a portal there, remember? That's what they're looking for. That's what your mother was guarding. Do you, do you know when they retreated? Like, how long ago that was? My days have been fuzzy. Maybe a few days ago, a week at most, we Be have anywhere. been in disarray. Well, I mean, we need to pursue them. You say that there's a portal up north. Some you think place. that's where they would go? I do not even know who they are. Is it... These are the guys that worship my, um... Yeah, right? I'm not crazy. Are you asking... Worship who? Are you asking me? Like, in character or out of character? Is... Uh, I don't care. These are the guys who worship, like... The guy who created me, right? At the moment, you don't know who it is. Um, Brick oh. is going to um, walk over until he finds... I assume it being a mental console's room, there's plenty of paper strewn around to like, write on or something. Oh, loads. Yeah, he's going to draw the symbol of the uh, two dotted eyes and bring it over where they wearing this symbol kind of turns his head slightly to look at it. Oh, that's right, one eye. <laughs> I, I do believe so. My the efforts cultists. since the attack has been to finish preparing for your rebirth. If you're going anywhere, you need to... Don't you say that has to wait? This has to happen. We don't know if we're or when we will come back. Well, I was about to ask, will that have to be delayed or are we prepared? If you have the crystals, there are steps needing to be done. It should take... And he kind of pauses a moment and looks at where his arm used to be and you see the little metal bits kind of go like... <laughs> 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 I will need assistance and he looks at all five of you I'll help I've dabbled in clockwork before um 
You are. And Brick just looks at Pez. Artificer. Yes. He's looking at you, yeah. Pez. Yeah. Some would say seven levels into it. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of, he, like, you see him, like, lean forward. You can tell that he is s still stiff and sore. But he moves across the room, goes to where a big pile of uh, parchments are, and he just starts, like, moving them aside. And then he gets a handful of them, and he comes back stumping over to you, Pez. Please look at these this evening. <laughs> we will speak in the morning. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Rick just looks at Pez and then kind of the group as a whole. My life in your hands. Let's see, um, question, Mr. Ch Chimari, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is your arm... Actually, hold on a second. Don't need a smith at all. Uh, okay. Um, are there any parts of your arms that can be mended easily? No. It was I... disintegrated. Ah. A replacement is being made, but progress is slow. So, please look over the plans. And he's looking at you, Pez. Explain hmm. what you can to your fellows. And we will begin in the morning. It will take some days. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, I can't do much else. We need the metal man in full metal condition. Yep. Okay. He makes a slight gesture, basically giving you permission to leave. Um, Oatley is standing outside and is, you know, kind of overhearing. Uh, He's dropper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as the five of you, six of you, come out, um, he leads you to some guest chambers. Mm -hmm. We have room to spare if you wish, though I am sure. You are homesick. I'm uh, talking like the wrong guy. Uh, we have rooms to spare, but if you are homesick, you may stay in your home. <gasps> I hope. Has Mortar reported back? I feel like he would have had enough time to fly up, take a look around, and fly back. He was gone for a while. Um, what, what, what's, what's your plan? Are you going out to the wagon, or are you going to stay inside? Or are you waiting for Mortar to come back? I just had him, like, fly up and out, and then yeah. down I, through the tower. Oh, gotcha. I, I get that. I'm trying to figure out time frames here of talking, walking, and all of that. I'm yeah, walking back to the wagon. Yeah, I would say we would go back anyway, but I was okay. just having Mortar. Right. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I was trying to figure out, where things were, were falling into line uh, thematically. Yeah. So, okay. uh, you all begin walking back out. Walking is a funny word. No, Zahn is sprinting. He, he's doing the, the power walk, you know, the weird wiggle. <laughs> Caffeinated gay. Sumi is dashing and action dashing. Oh. Show oh. off. <laughs> the last one of the carriage is a rotten egg. <laughs> Good luck keeping up with me. Um, Kasumi, as you absolutely <laughs> tear ass up those steps, um, you are a blur of tails, and a big fluffy thing is kind of soaring past you as you are leaving. Um, <laughs> it's like a little... <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> since you were the first to get there, um, you see that the wagon is... Um, tilting to the front right. The front two wagon wheels have been basically sheared in half. Um, the front bay windows have been shattered inward. 
um, whatever happened or exploded or has struck the wagon seems to have hit it in the front. Uh, one of the rear wheels, uh, the, the back right one, there's a, uh, a chunk of the wheel that's gone, um, but it's a little bit more intact than the front ones are. So it's kind of like slightly listing to the right, but it's more leaning forward than any of the other directions. Um, Brick, you are getting the same sort of information from Mortar at about this time as you're ascending the stairs, he's coming down. Um, <clears throat> the interior seems more or less okay. Um, things in shelves have been dislodged. Uh, chairs and the table have kind of shifted forward just from the, the sudden drop in uh, the, the, the pitch mm -hmm. of the, the wagon. Um, but Kasumi, you get back, the door is still locked. Okay. Um, she, she is going to go in and she's going to tiptoe so she doesn't tip, like, make it turn more mm -hmm. um, over to our changing closet door. Okay. And she's going to check all the doors to make sure everything is still fine. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you go to the first one, it's the closet, you open it up, there's all the musty clothes and the armors that have been there from before and the ones that you've added since. You close that, open it up uh, to the pantry. Again, a lot of the food has shifted a little bit. Um, some of it has fallen onto the floor, but most of it just kind of piled up against each other towards the uh, towards the door itself. You're kind of like, it's not a severe tilt, but it, it's, it's just enough to notice that if you're not paying attention, you stand up and thinking you're normal, you're gonna, you know, uh, italicized yes a minor italicized uh you turn it to ferns and yeah. oh. you turn it to ferns you open it up there's the hallway um do you go into the hallway or do you just you just open it look and then shut it again yeah she's just opening it to look mm -hmm. make sure it's still there so the dark hallway is still there um nothing seems to be amiss the the doorway beyond is closed leading you to believe that no one's been through there. And uh, I would say right around the time that you get done checking Fern's portion of the pantry, uh, Zahn is huffing and puffing and he's hopping up into the door uh, looking for... Where did you leave him? It's just in the main room. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Make an investigation check. <clears throat> No. Uh, five. Five? <laughs> You're looking around the main room. There's no little blue dinosaur shrimp. I think the better question is, how many chair legs are missing? Make an investigation check. <laughs> uh, who, me? Yeah, you. You asked. Oh. All right. <laughs> Uh, 17 plus 7 and 4 uh, no chair right. legs are missing oh. I don't think he had enough jaw strength to do any actual damage uh, Mariko assuming that you were following along with them mm -hmm. uh, it is a very large two story uh, house on wheels basically there is a turret in the back, a driver's seat in the front, a large bay window uh, in the front right before where you see uh, a large yoke where Bisa Burton would have been uh, tied up to pull it. Um, windows on the top floor on both sides, it looks like. Uh, around the back there are uh, luggage containers, barrels. Um, all of them seem to still be in place, but apart from the bits of destruction. Uh, as, as big as it is, um, if you follow them inside, your first realization is that the interior is much larger than what the outside would appear to be. Um, straight in through the door on your left is a kitchen sort of area. Kasumi is standing by what looks to be a uh, pantry door, uh, which I guess you wouldn't necessarily know what a pantry door is. There is a door there that seems to slide open. A table and chairs in the front to the left kind of slid up against the wall. Uh, the wall behind that is a very, very large map um, of 
the world. And furthest to your right, just immediately past that, uh, the table and chairs, is a set of switchback steps that seem to go back up to the floor above you. Um, looking in up the stairs, you see really, really nice uh, leather chairs. The windows, the bay windows, have been shattered inward. So there's glass all over the floor and all down the steps there. Um, many of the books on the shelves have been dislodged. Some of them seem to have been burnt a little bit. Um, yeah. Marika's just trying to stay out of the way while they're seeing, while well, they seem to be like searching heavily for stuff. Rick is going to head up to the second floor as gingerly as he can to check on both the library and um, the safe that we have in the workshop. Crunch, 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 crunch goes the heavy metal man up the glass strewn steps. Um, you go up to check the rooms. Um, the uh, the first room on the left, the little guest bedroom, that door is slightly ajar. Um, the master bedroom door seems to have remained shut. Pop it open. Apart from the regular uh dislodgement of stuff that room seems fine you check the guest bedroom and there's a little blue tail underneath the bed that's just slowly waggling it's on what? found it found it found what the shrimp thing the blue the blue thing magnus yeah that one you just hear, you hear it very not gingerly. <laughs> <laughs> then you hear, ah, ooh, ah, glass. Hell, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in the fur. <laughs> uh, the Rick, you you get you get absolutely shouldered aside, uh, Zon. You you see his little his little tail and his feet sticking out from underneath the uh, the the guest bed in there. Um, pulling him out, he seems perfectly fine. He was gnawing on a cushion. That it slid underneath it. Just. Second. So it picks him up, carries him down with him. You are never leaving my sight again. <laughs> uh, Brick, you continue on checking out the workshop. Uh, tools have been dislodged. Some are on the floor. Some are. Uh, anything that was on a shelf has been dislodged. The safe is still bolted in place, and you, you check it. Seems to be locked still. You were dreading the library. As you open the door, and I would say about 75 to 90% of the books are no longer on the shelves, and you all just hear knees hitting the floor. My alphabetation! <laughs> My Dewey Decimal System! Uh, Zanj peeks his head in. Hmm. That sucks. <laughs> Shame. Yeah. <laughs> Just pets Magnus. <laughs> it uh, it will be a bit of an effort to get all of the books back onto the shelf. Mm. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, anything else? Uh, for After we're done looking, I do have to fix something. Um, Kazumi is still in active search mode. Now that she's made sure that door still works, and her money is there, <laughs> um, she is now going to go into fox mode <laughs> and basically try to look for anything that looks placed. Something that was not there. Okay. That we put it there. And this includes, like, she's going to go out and, like, go underneath the cart. And look and like sniff around and she's just trying to make sure that nothing looks like it was purposely placed there by someone else. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check. And I'll let you make it with advantage since you've been with the cart for so long. <clears throat> okay. 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 Um... On robe with high it's intelligence. A... <laughs> it was an eighteen. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. uh, you spend the next hour or more checking every nook and cranny 
Um, as this is happening, all of you for, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to you figuring out what you all are doing, but, uh, you'll be in the middle of something and you just feel this little fuzzy head just like wiggling between your feet as, uh, Kasumi is ah. just rooting around, looking in everything, checking under the tables, checking in the cabinets. Uh, you hear scratching noises from outside as she's digging near where the wheels are and underneath, like just checking everything. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything that wasn't there before that you have seen. Okay. And judging by the, um, while the door had been locked and the windows had been busted in, uh, they were paneled windows. And the frames still seemed to all be there. It's just the glass was hit with a concussive force and just blew them out. Uh, okay. Not enough room for uh, a creature of a size that you would expect to be able to get through and do anything inside, if that makes sense. Okay. Looks like they just, just damaged the outside. <laughs> yeah, just something happened outside. Perimeter check. Yeah. Yep. Um, how, when you say perimeter check, are you staying just around the wagon or how far out are you going? Uh, I wouldn't, she probably wouldn't go any farther than maybe like 10 feet away okay. from the wagon. Just fairly within the vicinity so she can just make sure that it doesn't look like anything was purposely left behind or placed that looks nefarious. Okay, got it. Uh, so. While Kasumi is doing that, I see f fingers and hands being raised, so we'll start with Brick. What would you like to do at this point in time? Uh, Brick is looking for some rubble that is large enough to be used as cinder blocks so that the <laughs> wagon is no longer at a tilt. <laughs> Um, while I appreciate the thought, you have no way of lifting the wagon by yourself. This would be... What with help? If only we had a bunch of soldiers that we could conscript. Wait a it's minute! Someone that can turn into a large being to hold the weight. Yeah, that! <laughs> <laughs> we have possible Earth Elemental small rabbit that is much stronger than he looks and giant metal man. I think we got this. You're forgetting, the, you're forgetting the strongest person in your group. His. Oh, hamburger. <laughs> hamburger. We got He's it. just like, don't He's... worry guys, I got this. <laughs> yeah. He's just standing there like, all of the people on the outside of the wagon actually lifting it just out of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll I'll help. The only thing that I was going to do is moisturize um, Snail so we can start cleaning. Okay. Um, so before Kasumi. Pez goes to lend his might oh. to the effort, uh, Moriko, you would see Pez... He, he's looking around for a little bit, and eventually he is able to find on the floor a blue cube about yay big. It goes over to the sink area, uh, turns a little knob, and water begins to come out of this nozzle and it hits the cube and the cube begins to swell until it's about a foot foot and a half uh in all directions and he turns the water off and backs up and this slime just starts just inching its way <laughs> just all over the place for the next like four to six hours it's just moving across things it's going over books uh, chairs, the floor, um, anything. It's not consuming like you would expect. It's not uh, dissolving the books. It's not damaging the wood. But anywhere that there's uh, dirt or debris or dust, gone. Yeah. Uh, Snail. <laughs> Marie was just standing at the, at the ground floor, just like messing with her hair, just like, okay. <laughs> Rico, we could use your help. Yeah, we'll we'll give you the grand tour when we get situated. Yes, when Snails. What kind of help? Uh, can you turn into anything with lift? Lift? Like fly? Uh, no, no, like act, like lift. Oh. Can you lift something that is heavy? Uh. I'm trying to think of what animals Mariko would know of that she could wild shape into. I mean, not so animal would work. I, you could turn into elementals, yes. 
I don't want to freak people out and turn into an elemental. He would have... just looks around. Is anyone around? <laughs> Sorry, what were you going to say, Pez? <laughs> I, I was just wondering, like, about the snail, the crystal snail thing. That was pretty big. I had to polymorph into that. I couldn't wild shape into it. If you're not doing that again, Brick is not getting shut off. No, thank you. <laughs> um, Brick, to, to answer your question, you do look around. There are a fair few guards out and about. They are patrolling. Um, very few of them are paying any of you any mind. They, they seem to uh, accept that you were there and that you were there under permission from Jamale and uh, whoever else may be in charge. Uh, if anything, they're making sure that you are just as safe as Chichimek is. I mean, like a giant gorilla, or uh, okay, I'm trying what? to think of like what animal she would have seen in the Depetal Mountains. Um, not that many. Um, especially, I mean, in your region, you would be more likely to run into elementals and the like. Um. um. If if we show you a picture of a critter, could you turn into that, or do you have to actually like physically lay hands on the critter? I think I just have to see it because in the past I've just looked at like like when you guys saw me as the eagle, I saw the bird. I'm like, I want to be a bird, and I turned into a bird. <laughs> All I can think of now is break to the library. <laughs> 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 we have a picture of kind of like Back to the Future Part 3 of like Doc Brown and Marty McFly stand by the clock tower. We have a picture like that of us standing in front of the wagon with Cassie. I don't think so. Would Cassie be able to lift? Good point. Well, you could saddle her up. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fine. Uh, well, the the front of the wagon has been is the most severely damaged. The yoke, so is, it's tilting down. Yeah, the yoke is splintered and broken as well. Okay. So maybe something that could lift. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yep. Honestly, yep. an elemental is yeah. just fine. If you've seen an earth elemental, you're very far yep. from your mic. <laughs> if you have seen an earth elemental, I think that that would be just fine. I do not think anyone here is going to scoff at that are they scene. going to freak out and try to attack me I mean, I the patrol. hey you guys gonna freak out if she turns into an earth elemental <laughs> the patrol stops with the commander looking at you he looks at his <laughs> squad and back at you and just continues on his patrol <laughs> I think that's your answer <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> you knock chuck <laughs> she is, <laughs> she's kind of wild shape into an earth elemental okay uh you turn into an earth elemental the others are still around watching you uh another passing patrol kind of glances over sees who you're with and that you're just kind of fee fi foeing your way over to the wagon <laughs> and not attacking and they just kind of <laughs> All right. I'm doing weirder <laughs> things. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious. Like, you're pink, right? Oh God. So, like, <laughs> if you're an Earth Elemental, I assume you're also pink. So, like, would that? She's pink, pink Himalayan rocks? salt. <laughs> yeah, like that, that's what I'm thinking. Or pink um, clay. Or like pink quartz. Crystals. Yeah, crystals. Oh. Feel like barrel. Not opal. Yeah, just pink rock. rock. Pink shiny rock. Rock, 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 rock. <laughs> so I'm, where? Never mind. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> um, oh. so, I assume well, momentarily, she lifts as one of our two people progress forward slightly. Uh, uh, there's one thing I need to do in the... To progress forward it. slightly. Uh, with the help of Morico and Brick and Pez, uh, you are all able to 
for lack of a better word, jack up the wagon, get stuff <laughs> underneath it to uh, keep it propped up and to begin making repairs in the future. Uh, it is getting very, very late into the evening after you've spoken with Chamale, uh, raised the wagon, investigated everything, made sure everything is still there. Um, I'm a potato. Hello, potato. Hello, potato. Hello, potato. Um, it is getting into the wee hours of the morning now, and you are risking getting points of exhaustion the longer you stay awake. Oh, um, CB. So, Zon, you said that there was something you were wanting to do? I'll do it in the morning, if it's okay. getting that late. Okay. Is there anything anyone wants to do before resting for the evening? Okay. Uh, Kasumi is going to mm -hmm. go outside, and are there... There's, like, little bushes and brush near the entrance, correct? Like, fairly surrounding this area? Yes. Okay, she is in fox form, going to snoop around and see if she can find any animal remains. Okay. Um, make an investigation check. Uh, and Pez, as a reminder, you were given um, mm -hmm. the parchment with the with stuff on it, if you wanted to look yeah. at that. For, like, my first watch or something, I'll, I'll look at that. Uh, well, that is an option. You do not... You can take watches if you like, uh, but as you were all... During everything that you're doing, there has been a constant amount of movement outside as guards are patrolling the area. Non-stop. Uh, Kasumi, what'd you roll? I only got an eight. An eight. Okay. Um, you, with it being as dark as it is, you have dark vision? Yeah. Okay. Um, you are able to see really obvious bits of animal activity, but most of it is, uh, smaller, not terribly big, just the kind of underbrush kind of normal critters that would scurry around. Um, <clears throat> it's a little too gloomy and oddly quiet. Um, best guess is whatever used to be around in this area has left for the time being, especially after whatever sort of uh, battle had taken place before. It probably spooked a fair bit of the local wildlife away. Okay. So, no bones. Um, the no bones day. Not, no bones. not that you're able to find at the moment. Um, it is nighttime, and yeah. with dark vision, you see in you know shades of gray. Uh, that little rock could have been a toe, but it also could have been a rock. Okay. So. Okay. And she's not gonna spend a ton of time, like maybe half an hour at most, and then she's gonna go yeah. back with the group. Could potentially be something to look for in the morning when there's a little bit more light to play with. Yeah. Anybody else? I'm gonna be looking over what um what I was given. Okay. And then promptly sleep. Um at a quick glance, it is basically the design of brick 2.0. Hmm. Um there are etchings and uh, magical sigils placed in specific places. Uh, the materials needed, the dimensions, the uh, the wire work. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the wire work that would be needed to connect everything. Um, it is quite literally brick. And what will make him, him. Uh, there seems to be... Uh, Towards the end of the stack that you had been given, there seems to be a few pages that aren't there. This seems to be the main physical construction. Um, and you can definitely see that uh, there's parts that you can take care of. There's parts that uh, maybe some of the other people in the Tempest could participate in. Uh, some of it being just pure aesthetics that could be helped with. Uh, materials that could be 
you could very easily instruct someone how to, you know, do this for me real quick. I'm going to do the hard shit. You do that. Uh, there's a lot of potential for delegation from what you can see. But uh, as soon as you get to that kind of realization, uh, tiredness and exhaustion start to take hold and you want nap time. Dead. So, if there are no other objections, we will... Uh, is anyone actually going to take a watch? Or are they trusting in the guard to do so? Your I'm going to sleep on a space. couch. <laughs> oh! Because been... taking a watch, sorry. The children. Paz is sleeping on a couch? Damn. Look, I mean, there's still... It was Paz glass. that told them where we are. He's not him! <laughs> You're a big bad pony! Uh, so, Kasumi is... Uh, are you going to take, like, the first evening watch? Are you going to go halfway through? Or are you going to get up really early? She's... She's going to take the first evening watch. Okay. So, as the rest of you go to bed down, uh, how, how and where are you taking the watch? Um... She is going to go up towards the tower in okay. the in our cart. <laughs> Has anyone shown Mori go around yet? <laughs> no, she has just found a spot on the floor level and is just laid down and is like, I, I will stay right here. I am out of the way. <laughs> I'm going to stay on the couch. It <laughs> 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 just goes over and <laughs> In the middle of the night, you feel a weird squishiness on your leg. <laughs> um, she is, Brick is not taking a fluff. <laughs> Brick is not taking a watch, but Mortar will be up all night. <laughs> Poor little guy. He is, he, is my, he is my good watchdog. Ow. All right. Watch out. Uh, Kasumi up in the tower. <clears throat> Mortar does join you. And every now and then, he will take oh. flight and kind of do a little, a couple paths around. But whenever he comes back to land, there doesn't seem to be any urgency in his demeanor. Um, and apart from the occasional stomping of feet, there's no other noise the evening, apart from the patrols wandering about. <clears throat> so, if there is nothing else anyone would like to do, you all get a long rest. And soon enough, the morning returns. Let's uh, get a little bit away from the moodiness and get something that's kind of pleasant for a change. Um, Yay! <clears throat> okay. Uh, the morning comes uh, somewhat faster to some than they may have preferred, maybe just a, wanting a little bit more rest. Uh, wishing to not uh, <laughs> to not be greeted with the reality of the um, the loss that has happened, um, but you all wake up of your own accord. Uh, Mariko, it's not the most comfortable sleep you've ever had. The wood floor is kind of weird. Um, it's covered in glass. You, you do Fair wake up. up and there's a fluffy hamburger kind of just sitting in your lap. I'm gonna pet the burger. Pez, you wake up and your your companion has betrayed you. <laughs> cold. <laughs> I'm cold. So, so alone. <laughs> so, um, the day is yours. What would you like to do? Whenever Brick's shorter than normal uh, long rest would have ended he actually probably would have waited till he thought Chamale might be awake and then exited the cart obviously probably Moriko is the only one noticed um, but crunch, he would exit the cart crunch crunch crunch, crunch. <laughs> he tried uh, but he would have <laughs> gone back into the city uh, to find Chamale and Make a uh, just like have a conversation about possible aesthetics, uh, possible aesthetic improvements. Okay, uh, I, Zom, guess. I know that you have been dying to get something done. 
<laughs> Sorry. First, I need to go up to Mariko. Hmm? Mariko, I need you to look after the Magnus. I will okay. hand Mar the Magnus. I actually linked it in the... I, I saw. He just... He just oh, okay. He passes you by, dumps off this weird blue shrimpy dinosaur thing, and no sooner does it land on you than its little its little jaw just kind of like clamps down and just starts like gumming. It doesn't hurt. It's a little weird, but it's just kind of like, the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it head scratches. It seems to be <laughs> smiling, but it is still just kind of chewing. <laughs> The lights aren't on. It. <laughs> yeah, you you take a look at this thing and you're like, I've seen slime smarter than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in the cart. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, that knows how to clean. I was going to say, lo looking around, you do see Snail is much smaller. He's about yay big and he's just like, eh, eh. <laughs> he's just very, very slowly moving. Who sees this, me? No, uh, Mariko. Oh. So you've dumped off Magnus. I need to repair my sword. Apparently Mendy works on magical items. <laughs> yeah! Uh... I said the same thing, too. With d, d Beyond, you too can look up these facts. Put a chip in my sword, and this replaces repairs a break. Don wants to repair break. Hold, please. Oh, D&D &D Beyond is a magical place where you can do magical things. Quit making Such it sound like Disney. All this. What? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The spell can physically repair a magic item or construct, but the spell can't restore magic to an object that has been demagicified. I did not realize that. So didn't it take a minus one to demagicify yeah, no, 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 it was just chipped. Like, I literally smacked it with a sword and chipped the blade. Hold, please. Okay. Another cool thing with D&D &D Beyond oh, is awesome. if you switch over to the Lego set, it will deafen you. <laughs> it's very loud. Um, yeah. No, that'll work. Uh, so you go downstairs... Look at Mariko go, hold this. Drop Magnus off. Take your sword out. Just go. Boop. It's fixed. I was expecting that to take longer. <laughs> so let's get put it away. Thank you for watching, Magnus. Hands back the blue. Kasumi's gonna stumble down the stairs now, very much mourning, disheveled. <laughs> you know, now that I oh. think about it, the glass wouldn't be there. Snail would have eaten that. Oh. Yeah. Good. Ah, uh, Kasumi? Why? Like you, you looked for a lot of things last night, but I don't think you looked for the most important thing to you in here. And Zahn's gonna point to the cabinet where your tea weird usually is. No, I... I... I had faith that that was still there. I was more concerned about things that were left behind on purpose by the weird cult people. Son's gonna go to the. Son's gonna go to the cabinet. Oh, she's she's as she's talking, she's moving towards the cabinet. Oh, okay. She's got like her morning robe on. Um, her hair's kind of sticking up a little bit, like by her ears, just because just static. Um, and she's, <laughs> well, she's getting out Well, you're in a jungle, it's weird. very humid here. Yeah. With the yeah. windows, yeah. So, not static, just frizz. Yeah. Oh. Oh, God. This is, this it's is worse. This is <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> it is, it's so much worse. But um, yeah, she's gonna get the tea weird out. So, you take out the tea weird and Mariko, if you're still sitting on the floor, or if you've mm -hmm. moved the table, or wherever you happen to be, uh, Kasumi takes out this very, very pretty uh, teapot and a uh, set of teacups. And uh, you see her begin to pour water inside of it, open it up, and there's this little gloop, gloop. Something kind of like leapt up out of the top of it and glorped back down inside. Interesting. What was would that? You, 
um, it's tea. Um, it's magical tea. Would you like some tea? And just like wiping the sleep from our eyes. <laughs> uh, sure. Don't don't remember trying it, but I'll try it. Well, you're a child of nature. Um, what are some of your favorite berries or herbs? Whatever I could find that wasn't poisonous. Do you remember? Do any of them have names? <laughs> I yes, the ones that are not poisonous. Do, what are, <laughs> describe what they look like. <laughs> some are red. Some were blackish blue. Uh, the herbs were green. You know, we're going to go with a mixed berry and mint tea. I think that's a really safe route. So um, I was laughing his ass off the whole time. You're talking to a poor girl that has not really had much human interaction. Then we just thought, oh, she likes leaves. She knows plants. <laughs> Yes, I mean, if I ate this one, it gave me the shits. But when I ate this one, I was fine. <laughs> you so me, you are so, so innocent. If, if you don't want leaf juice, I got bean juice. Dirty bean water. <laughs> that sounds worse. I'll go with the leaf juice. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you to try it. <laughs> so it's the one that doesn't actually drink coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> cowboys drink coffee, okay? Therefore, Pez drinks coffee. Uh -huh. You should ask him for the seasoning in his bean juice. He loves putting dirt in it. It's great. Actually, am I the only it's... one in this call right now that drinks coffee? Oh, I drink coffee like a motherfucker. <laughs> okay, I couldn't remember if you do or not. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> no Already. <laughs> he said he's going to make her, her berry mint tea. Um... And she does have, like, a little happy, joyful smile on her face. Just having this little bit of nostalgia, like, everything's fine. So the tea weird's working. Yes. <laughs> she she sets the tea down, and she basically kind of leans in and uh, drops in, like, a leaf or two. And she just kind of says a, a word that you don't fully understand the meaning of. And you see the little... Uh, you're not sure what it is, but it kind of jumps out of the, the open lid again, and it looks like a really small slime, but it now has the leaf inside of it, and it, when it lands back inside, you begin to see steam coming up from uh, out of the spout and the top part, and there's no heat source. It's just on the table. What? Riku's and gonna go join her at the table. How is Pez making coffee? Like, is he just standing there with a lighter? Cowboy just coffee? I you, just, you were just holding hamburger and squeezing him. Does <laughs> <laughs> hamburger breathe fire? I mean, he's, either, he's either squeezing him to breathe fire or he's wringing him out to get the coffee. Oh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> both. So, I mean, both what is ability? <laughs> do you want him to breathe fire or secrete coffee? Oh god, we had to use the word secret. Fire! Absolutely fire! <laughs> <laughs> like, were you thinking like he was eating the grounds and then horking it up like a bird? I mean, he could be. Listen, it would not put it past Pez to still drink it. You got a gizzard. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> on, on to different topics. Kasumi is pouring tea. <laughs> And then she is just going to slide it close to Mariko. And then she's just going to eagerly sit there waiting for you to try it. Mariko's going to pick up the cup. It's hot. Be she's careful. She's going to blow on it a little bit and take a sip. <laughs> I'm going to roll, roll to roll see, see if she likes it. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, roll low. <laughs> I like it. Spit, take, spit, take, spit, take. She oh, doesn't no. like it. She got a nat oh. one. Oh no, oh, spit no. take! Oh, no. Spit take! <laughs> She's oh, gonna just like... <laughs> you burn your tongue. I, I don't think I like this. I'm gonna slide over a cup of coffee black. Like my soul. You rolled How the did... dice, Mariko. <laughs> How did you make that coffee, Pez? Um... Internet. 
Get like, internet. <laughs> he just pushes hamburger away with his foot. Is that a book? Is that some sort of Finish, book? I don't like, know what like coffee. Yep. Yeah. It's a book. Oh no, she doesn't like coffee either. No, no she loves it. it. Was it oh, natural? Oh no. What was it? How was that made again? 19. <laughs> oh my god. She likes you... the crunchy bean water. <laughs> she likes there's, the hamburger drink. There's, there's an earthiness to this that just reminds you so much of the like the the roots and stuff that you used to have to forage the uh not quite so much fruitiness but you know the, just the kind of like the rind of some fruits that's still edible uh it's as my mom those mm -hmm. as my mom once said this dirt tastes delicious <laughs> yeah that that not new fancy fruit fruit thing is not great for you but this black and brown water i don't know man <laughs> I'm just gonna look at Kasumi. I am willing to try other kinds, but I don't like that flavor. That's okay. It's an acquired taste, and she just pulls it back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and Kasumi's gonna like look over. She's not. She's not really looking snooty, but she's like looking into the cup. Can she see like black? like specks all over the side of the cup that she just drank from that uh the the, the, the coffee, co the coffee the coffee i mean it's, it's your brew it's, you tell her <laughs> it, oh it has brew um <laughs> is it full-on cowboy coffee I'm, it's more refined cowboy coffee i mean you you will find a little speck or two but like maybe the, the filter like folded over yeah. in the coffee maker yeah. filter you're funny I'm describing for someone who actually drinks coffee because sometimes that actually happens and you will get grounds in your coffee. Zon yeah. is actually looking at both and all three of you very puzzledly, puzzledly, whatever, puzzled. You guys know so we can just go to fans, right? Where? We'll do that tomorrow. We've got I'm saying the fuck that shit. I'm going to get breakfast. I, well, I was going to help fix brick right now, but I mean, all right, heck off, I guess. So, as this is happening, Mariko, Zahn says, I'm gonna go get breakfast! And he walks towards the back of the wagon. He seems to turn a knob near that closet you, you, you had seen Kasumi next to. He flings the door open and walks through. And as he walks through, there's a hallway behind. And he continues walking, but a little after image of him remains in that space. Like a really flat 2D version of the back of him. As he continues mm -hmm. on down the hallway, gets to a door, opens it, and shuts it behind him. Where did he go? <clears throat> no, God damn it. Um, technically, it's like an another dimension, kind of. Uh, okay. It kind of. Almost teleported him to a cafe, but he's not technically there. We we we, we can show you later. Um, okay. It's right about this time that you all realize that you haven't seen Brick. Where where is that heavy thing? <laughs> heavy thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably in the workshop. Yeah, he probably. he went outside. I saw him go outside. Bless. I mean, if, if we three want to finish up our drinks, we can head over there, because I looked over these uh, schematics, and um, we are I am going to need some help. Mm. Oh, okay. that reminds me. Rinko, are you done? Eh, yes. Are you done with your bean water? Yes. Okay, follow me. She doesn't even wait. She grabs you by your wrist and starts bringing you upstairs. <laughs> okay, uh, so she she leads you up the first uh, set of stairs, sharp right, up the next bit, and you see a long hallway. Down at the very, very end, you see a spiral staircase going up with what you, to where you would think would be the tower that you had seen from the exterior. Um... <clears throat> Immediately to your left and right are two doors. Uh, just past the door on your left, there seems to be a little hallway alcove, and past that is a second door. 
on the right side, it's just a straight wall from the first one to a second door. Carry on. So she does kind of, she doesn't really point out all the rooms. She's on a mission. But like, <laughs> as they're approaching the door for like the master bedroom, she points the at right. the staircase. She's like, by the way, that's the tower. Um, anyways, we're going to go in here. And she goes into the master bedroom. Um, oh. And she is going to go right to the closet. Okay. Just real quick to paint a picture. You first step inside the door on your right. Uh, on the left is a large stone fireplace with two big high back chairs sitting in front of it on a rug. Uh, the wall immediately away from you is just a huge long bay window. Just cushions lining the whole way around uh, and on the far right wall you see a very very large very comfortable looking bed and to the right of it is the closet that she is now dragging you towards okay so she goes right to the closet and she kind of opens it up and she turns okay so i know that you've put together a very cute little makeshift outfit but I feel like you might like some of the things in here. Now, some of them are my kimonos. You're more than welcome to help yourself to those. But there were also some other pieces of clothing that might fit your aesthetic. So, go on. And she just, like, gestures to us. <laughs> so, looking inside, uh, there seem to be... Uh, bits of clothing for, as she said, some of her own, but there's there's some in there that don't look quite her size, and there's some that look to be more of a taller, uh, masculine uh, size uh, figure. Um, but there's just a, a plethora of, trying to think of the best word, like region specific, like you, you see stuff that looks like it's from Zan's area. You see stuff that looks like what Kasumi was talking about, the kimonos. Um, you see more, uh, leathery and, and button styles, kind of like what Pez would wear, but, you know, clean. Um, <laughs> you, you see very, very little in the, uh, the, the, the Aslan style. Um, there's maybe one, like, up in the top shelf, there's maybe, like, a headdress, there's some bright feathers up in the corner, but compared to the, like, heavy metals and the kind of, uh, jungly, leaving a lot of skin exposed attire just from the heat, there's not so much of that. Um, but you do see some other really nice silk clothes, uh, heavy jackets, um, lighter, shorter sleeves. There's loads to choose from in here. Uh, do, do I have time to look through all this? Yeah, I mean, I figure Pez needs some time to study the designs to figure out what all needs to be done. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm not much of a um, handy person. I don't yeah. know how to build things like that. Yeah. So I figured this would be an ideal time. If you don't want to, you're more than welcome to come up here again. This, by the way, is the main room that I stay in, but I do tend to sleep in the fox form just because it's a little bit more comfortable and I take up less space. So there's plenty of room left on the bed if you need a place to stretch out that's not the floor. I just didn't know where to go. Absolutely. Yesterday was kind of a whirlwind. Yeah. Mariko's going to take a second and she's just going to start looking through the clothing for stuff that might fit her. Okay. Um, we'll let you think about how you may want to change your style and we'll kind of bounce around to some other people. Uh, but yeah, feel free to come up with an outfit. I'm really kind of curious what you might, uh, come up with. Uh, so, um, the ladies are playing dress up. Uh, Zahn, you fixed your sword. Was there anything else that you were doing, Zahn? Because I, I know, I know what Brick's doing. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to him. Um, food. Right, sorry, you're at Ferns. Right. You're, you're horking down... Uh, a big everything, meal, kind of, of explaining this. everything that happened to Fern. Uh, it is one of the days where he is running the the cafe proper, so he's not able to pay as much attention uh, just for how busy he is. Um, Pez, what are you doing, buddy? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm still fawning over the uh, schematics. Okay. Um, 
If you want to try to understand it on your own, make a regular investigation check. Uh, you are more than welcome to go and try to get help from Brick, Chamale, Zahn, whoever. Um, and in that instance, I would give you advantage. But if you want to give it a go yourself, just a normal investigation check. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. I'm proficient in that. I have a little circle filled in. All right. <laughs> Holy shit. That's a natural 20 plus 7. Ooh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, He's a piece of dice. Awesome. All right. Uh, Chamale. That's power of love. <laughs> Even though there, there's some annotations in there that are not written in common, um, the general layout and uh, the, the, the footnotes and the markings, they're all very normal things that you have seen before many, many times in the past. You definitely feel like so long as you have the help and maybe a little bit of heavy lifting and uh, the proper delegation, you can do this. Uh, so, Brick, you have gone down into Chichimec, and you have spent quite a bit of time talking with uh, Chamali mm -hmm. about the improvements and the ideas that you have. And he seems to be nodding and agreeing and seems very, very um, with your ideas and seems eager to fulfill those desires, those wishes that you have. Um, we will need to adjust design, but all is doable. This is not the path I expected, but one that is good. Whether it be by my own desires or by the desires of the magic of the world I think I can feel myself being tugged in a certain direction and I want to fulfill that purpose um, also I don't know if we have time for this after I am settled but I was hoping and he takes out the drawing that he has been working on for the past few weeks I was wondering if you could help me refine this design and it, at the very least maybe guide me and walk me through it as I would wish to do this myself this is something we can do but priorities as they are let us Indeed. get you functioning again to be safe agreed if you would please go get your Pez friend, I will adjust design and we can begin today. Much appreciated. Uh, Brick will go get the rest of the party. Okay. Um, so Brick does come back. Pez is at the table. He seems to be has the papers all spanned out you know he's doing full on Iron Man he's got the drawings lined up and everything <laughs> uh, there's some weird hard rock playing from somewhere it's really weird uh, it's Jack uh, uh, Zahn how long are you taking to breakfast would you do you think you'd be back after about an hour or so or oh easily Zahn is gonna you know scarf get a big ass really straw can. inhale it all and bounce Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, you come back, and Pez is pouring over the notes uh, that he was given by... Uh, how you doing there, Pez? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so much Pez. sausage and biscuits. I uh. see numbers. I smell bacon. I see colors. Zahn pulls out a piece of bacon from his pocket. Here you go, Pez. I yank it with my tail and eat it. <laughs> Broken, um, crusty-ass tail. Zon will also give one to uh, Kasumi and Mariko. Well, they are up in the master bedroom. Or er, have you found an outfit? Yes. Okay, I'm curious. I will share it in the group chat. Yes. Oh. I love it. It's so pretty. Ten bucks. 
Ten bucks. She already had those picked out because she knew what she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I did try to look for other stuff, but that just kept calling me. Oh, it looks me. good. It yeah, looks great. Good. Perfect. So, um, as Pez is munching on the pocket bacon, uh, Mariko comes down, and for a moment, it looks almost like she has gone back to the clothing that she had before, just wearing the leaves and the, the rough hides, but you look and see that this is actually really well-crafted uh, leather and silks, fine bits of uh, rope and leather belts, a very, very uh, clean, pretty white skirt. Um, it's sort of like a, a tailcoat that comes up and buckles around the middle. Uh, the silken armbands attach at the wrist and just uh, at the middle of the bicep on both arms. Um, looks good. Look very elven. I feel pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you still wearing the lightning raiment? She has. She's still wearing it, but she's not like wearing it to like actually cover herself. It's just more of a. She's kind of like Too interwoven and hidden it within the, the actual clothing. Okay, so it's kind of like using it more like an undergarment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. All of you are downstairs looking at Pez, just like, focus, focus, uh, as Brick finally arrives. Brick. Yes. Bacon. Mm. Not today. I would rather keep everything <gasps> clean. He's an imposter. We must kill him. Brick. Well, depending on how this day goes, you might. Um, is everyone ready? Bacon. Nobody has got some bacon? Wait! Moriko. Mm -hmm. Do you like some bacon? Eat meat. I eat meat, but I'm not sure if I've had bacon before. Well, you're gonna roll with advantage to find out if you do. <laughs> <laughs> you roll that dice with advantage. With advantage? Okay. With advantage. Good. I, I too had to roll with advantage. <laughs> It's bacon. It always gets advantage. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh if it's low. Well, I mean, it's advantage, so. Right. Mm, I know. Thing is, don't be low. If she doesn't like it, we have to banish her to the shadow realm. I'll okay. banish her. <laughs> the two, oh. Couldn't hear the what. The two dice I rolled were a nat one and a nat twenty. <laughs> oh <laughs> my <Thank> god. <laughs> it's okay. It's so all right. your your first bite down, you're like. Man, this is burnt. Wait a minute. Hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute. You you Just slowly and look over at mouth. you look over at Zon after slow like shoving that in. You go more. <laughs> Get can I? Can I like gently slide in next to Kasumi off screen and just like whisper to her? Bacon tea. What? What? Bacon tea. <laughs> She, she would love it. No. Would a slide back out of frame. <laughs> Put it in your bean water. He's just. Because <laughs> 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 Jimmy <laughs> looked insulted by that suggestion. <laughs> now, now, not only do we have Brick rolling to see if he likes stuff, we also have Mariko's rolling to see if she likes stuff. Welcome to the club. I'm okay with this. <laughs> This is fine. Because you're uncultured, okay? <laughs> yeah. Go. One more piece of bacon. <laughs> next, next time, we will get it fresh. Okay. It is uh, even better. So, is Bez, there anything... You were trying to get my attention. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, I know what you look like inside. <laughs> well, no. You know what he will look like inside. <laughs> It's a really weird thing to say, Pez. Yep. Yeah. Let's go. I'm gonna, like, okay. I'm roll not, up all not sure how I feel about this anymore. Maybe, maybe you should just let let me go. No. <laughs> so, uh, this process will take a few days. Is there anything you would like to do before starting this process? Find bones. <laughs> what? Throughout, throughout the day and chatting with people, you are able to find bones, whether it, okay. it's from the cookhouse or going out and hunting yourself or finding deceased critters. Um, Wait, 
Does roll, she find the bones of our creature? Roll 2d12. Okay. Okay. Yeah, can she get Cassie's bones? Hold on. Where's my other d12? This hiding from the hair disk. Uh, seven and a five. So you're able to find twelve. Well. And you can... I'll, I will allow you to continue to uh, roll two d12 for each day that you want to go looking for more bones. Okay. Sounds good. Um. Uh, <clears throat> quick question. With the talks with Chamali and Pez, would, would, for the next few days, is Brick just going to be basically under anesthesia or... Uh, n no, you will not. You will not be out of it until the transference happens. This is the constructing okay. of your body, so it will, it can and will literally be all hands on deck to get this done. Gotcha, understood. So, um, uh, mm -hmm. well, while we do work on Rick, um, again, like during the couple days, could I also talk to Turtle Man for another idea that I've been cooking up since I see sound now <laughs> sure uh message me about that real quick uh <clears throat> as we're transitioning into this we're going to take a quick break because i'm all out of water and i'm really fucking thirsty so i need to go get some of that so don't go too terribly far away we'll be back in about five minutes or so uh and uh we'll, we'll get back into fixing brick be back soon And we are back. So, when we left off but a brief moment ago, the Tempest were heading down into the bowels of Chichimek to begin the process of rebuilding brick. So, the first step, as you were instructed, is to gather the appropriate materials. With the smithy being in relative disarray, um, some of the things that would normally have a location are misplaced or moved to a different location to make room for uh, repair efforts. So um, anyone who would like to go off of Pez's instructions and Chamale's instructions to find the appropriate materials, raise your hand. Help. Okay, all of you. Um, make investigation checks, everyone. Oh no. We still have the blessing, right? <laughs> Kasumi. Two more days. Two days. Yeah. We're gonna need them. I got Metalli. <laughs> Two more days. Okay, so I heard a natural 20. 10. 17. 10, 17. Kasumi. A nat 20. <laughs> so two nat 20s, a 17, and. Maybe tie five! Uh, Zahn is playing with Magnus. This is. This isn't my strongest suit. Oh, hey, look, Magnus. <laughs> uh, total 26, by the way. Okay. Um, so. I, did, did you get my nat 20 also? Oh, 20, 20 as well. Nice. Uh, yeah. Dirty 20 or natural 20? Natural 20. So 27. Three nat yeah. 20s? We need to, well, hold on. We need to spread look, them out, guys. You <laughs> said, like, bless these. So, let them hurt. <laughs> She gave him a little... Witchy girlfriend. Yep. <laughs> That'll do it. Okay. Uh, for roughly the first day, you all begin to gather the appropriate materials. There's there's metal, there's stone. Um, you are searching for the, the proper tools for carving. Uh, you work with some of the blacksmiths there to start smelting down the material as you need from the furnaces that are still working. Um, it's kind of a hodgepodge of doing what Pez says, taking it to the the workers. Uh, they tell you that they need like one or two more things. You go grab that, bring it back. But as the day comes to an end, Pez is kind of, you know, marching down the line, checking his list, and you have everything that you need. Um, the Magus. three of you that rolled uh, natural 20s, um, at one point or another, you come <clears throat> across uh, a handful of workers that are uh, shifting things around, 
and they're busy lifting up a fairly large uh, bit of rubble and you run over to help the three of you and you shove it out of the way and um, you look down on the ground and uh, which which one of you rolled the highest? There, I heard there was a 27. I had a 26. 26. Mine would have only been a 24. So then Pez, I would say that you would be the one to notice this. Um, there, there was something crushed underneath the pillar that doesn't look like anything else that you had seen in the smithy for, uh, with, with all the searching you had been doing, uh, finding the materials and the tools and everything. Um, it's sort of like a, a blackish rock. Um, maybe something like obsidian, but it seems a little duller. Um, but for the most part, it was crushed beyond repair, but it's just something about it was off. Hmm. Rock. Um, is there anything else you want to do for the first day there? What's so off putting about this rock? Yeah, it was with Spez. Do you grab it or? Oh, yeah, I, I grabbed the shit out of that. Well, it's kind of like smooshed in a bunch of little tiny pieces. But, like, it doesn't look like coal. Um, it doesn't look like any material that you'd seen in the smithy so far. Yeah, um, gather up all the pieces. Yeah, Kasumi's going to help and, like, s kind of scoop it into, like, a little pile. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to try to cast Identify on it. <laughs> oh. Um, you, you try to cast Identify. Oh. Um, you get back that it is... There's nothing magical oh. about it. Or at the very least, if there was anything magical about it, there's nothing magical about it anymore. Um, the identify spell is basically coming out blank as just some rock. Okay. All right. I mean, bring it to the cool master. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll sprinkle it in. Bring it to the body. You have no say in this. I feel like I have a say in this. <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> I feel pretty involved. No, no, you're not. Okay. Uh, the next day comes around, and uh, Pez declares that it is time for the, uh, the the sculpting, the actual crafting, the metalwork. Um, him and Chamale look to um, Brick. Sorry, Chamale looks to Brick, Pez, and Zon, knowing that they are somewhat craftsmen. Uh, is there anything the three of you would like to contribute to this? Um, as far as... Brick, I know that you've given your design choices, but you're also a fairly good tinkerer. Uh, Pez, of course, knows the complete ins and outs and every, of everything. Um, Zahn, is there anything you want to add with your own personal skill set? I think the only thing that I have is anything that has to do with wood, So I mean, but it can be fine crafting, so anything that might need some finer detail, maybe? There's plenty of rune carving that needs to be done. I mean, stone is just hard wood. <laughs> yes. Give me some of the stone. I'm going to okay. cut a rabbit into it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> for the three of you, uh, make a dexterity check, add your proficiency. Oh, okay, I can do that. And if there's uh, anything sorry. specific that you want to add, personal personalized designs, bunny carvings... Um, so wait, so where are these stones, where is this, all this carving going? Everywhere. Obviously. You, you were, yeah, so you were you're... literally carving his body right now. So yeah. is there anything that's going to go around his neck? Yeah, most, most of the edge work, anywhere where there's gold edge work or anything, that's where most of the dwarvish and, uh, Aslan, uh, glyphs are going to be carved. Okay. Uh, so there well, are definitely I mean... designs in place. And knowing that you've got that fine-tuned um, handiwork, you could definitely, you know, Disney a penis in there somewhere if you really wanted no. to. Why I mean, would you give him that idea? Because it's funny. <laughs> and you yeah. could do, like, C-3PO and R2-D2, like, on the Ark of the Covenant. So he's going to, every, like, every rune that he needs to craft, he's going to craft. But in the very center, where his chest is going to be, he carves that into it. What is he carving? <laughs> Oh my god. 
Well, if you think about it, you can really call him your dad now because he's helping make you. I... That's a, fair. A craftsman always signs his work. Technically, I'm also your pa. <laughs> Yeah, that's right weird. Now you have two dads. Can you it. can be uncle. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uncle Pez. Uncle Pez. I am a little bit squinkly, grunkly looking. <laughs> Just gonna circle that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the next day or two is all about the crafting, the smelting, the carving, the decorative runes, um, the, the gold plating that is being used, none of you are allowed to see that process happen. Chamale goes into a special room behind a very large, very heavy sealed stone set of doors. Um, but they do come out via the drawings, the designs, any tweaks that are done with the rabbit or any of that. Um, so, bringing on to the fourth day, uh, a large stone slab has been brought into place. All the pieces are spread out across it. Uh, Pez, this is where mostly you are going to have to do this. You were the one that read the schematic, and Chamale only has the one arm. Uh, mm -hmm. This is where you are essentially fixing everything and wiring everything that needs to be wired. Mm -hmm. So, I need you to make a dexterity check plus your proficiency bonus. Another dex check plus proficiency. How oh, many I days have... Added... Oh, sorry. Uh, this, this is the start of the fourth day. Fourth day since starting working on this? Yes. Okay, so the plus two is no longer active then. Okay. Um, I, I did add one of my clockwork buggies into the design. Like, you just straight... Just like... like... Or I'm thinking. Sorry, I, I guess my question is, how did you incorporate it into the de the design? Like, or did you actually just take one of the bugs and just put it in there? Did you put the design of it somewhere in there, like etched in there, or are you like incorporating this bug into him somehow? And if so, which I mean, one? um, what kind of bugs do we have? You should uh, have the list. I do have a list. Um, I could have sworn I saw my clockwork buggies. Or is it shredded leather? Nope. Potion. Uh, butterfly. And what does a butterfly do? Um. <laughs> shit. I don't think butterflies shit. But they can. doesn't say hmm. hold please doesn't say anything not even a butterfly just a bugs that look like the map and some glow like fireflies uh... in the meantime I'm, I'm gonna roll <clears throat> as Okay, I mean, could be worse. 17. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. He's just making you sweat. Look, I, I rolled a 9, and my modifier plus my proficiency got it up to that. Uh, so the ones that were in the cart, the clockwork bugs, mm. were the earwig, the fey fly, the healer bee, the ink beetle, and the mendipillar. I do not have that list, but um, what's the fair fly? Uh, the the fey fly are the ones that come out at night to light up the outside of the wagon. Oh, okay. I mean, that could be useful. It might be problematic if you're trying to hide at night, though. True. We're hidden. What about the... Me. What about the hey, earwig? Um... Hmm. Uh, you 
wouldn't be able to implement that one. Okay. Um, instead of that, could I do, could I add in the Silver Dragon Odachi sword? Mm, it's a magical item. You wouldn't be able to just break it down. I mean, like, could I, like, add it in a secret compartment? Later on. My R2-D2? <laughs> I mean, it, it'll be a part of you. Uh, at this point in time, no. Maybe in a future iteration okay. or modification, you'd be able to do something quite, or something like that, but... Okay. Um, for the time being, the plans seem to be fairly set in stone, apart from just sort of cosmetic uh, tweaks here and there. Okay. <clears throat> but we'll come um, back to that. Yeah. In, instead of the clockwork buggy, I will put um, the stamp of the Marigold Farms under his foot. Which foot? Uh, right foot. I think that's where Andy signs his name. Oh, the worst. <laughs> You'll never see it unless you're walking on dirt or anything else like that. Yeah. It's like, hmm, my footprint looks really weird. <laughs> Brain. Really easy to track him down later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it could cause trouble for your sister. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, mm. uh. <laughs> if only we had to go meet her again. The wiring and the assembly seems to have gone without a hitch. The body seems to be in place. Chamale comes back out from the workshop once again, uh, having crafted the core. Looking very similar to Brick's current core, but uh, where his current one is a singular color, this one is multifaceted. Um, as colorful as it is, it seems to be dull. It's not as vibrant as his current one. Uh, very likely it's because it's not activated. Um, he brings it over to the chassis that Pez is finishing up and he sets it down into the center of the chest. This oh. will be used tomorrow to power. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow brick will transfer or he may not I advise you take time with your friend in case the worst comes to pass alright we're going to burns baby <laughs> <laughs> So. That sounds like a plan. Hmm. Heading to Ferns? Heading mm -hmm. to Ferns. You either head to Ferns and party like it's nine. Nine, like it's nine, 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 nine o'clock. <laughs> nice. It's, it's party like it's nine. It's, it's Rico passing. gets to go through the door for the first time. Yes. Mm -hmm. be wonderful. You know, if this had been a week earlier, you could have said we're going to party like it's 1449. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, actually, technically, you could, because now it's 1450, so you could party like it's 1449. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, Morico, they take you back to the wagon, uh, and heading towards the pantry door that you had seen Zahn go through. The little knob, as you see them turn it, uh, one of the symbols is a jacket, the other looks like a, a, like a clip art of a uh, leg of meat. And the last one uh, is a little leaf. It's turned to the leaf, the doors are opened, and the four of them walk through, and each one of them that walks through, again, that weird two-dimensional after image is left over of whoever went through. Do you follow after them? She's gonna hesitate, then, like, stick a hand in first, and then follow. Uh, sticking your hand through, the first thing you notice is, as your hand passes through, the heat and the humidity of the jungle seems to vanish. It's uh, it's not cold, but it's a fair bit cooler. Um, there's still a 
almost a wetness in the air, but it's not that humid wetness. It's more of like a oceanside kind of um, sensation. Uh, fuck it, you live in Florida. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you follow them through, and it's a relatively long, dark hallway with a door at the end. And uh, the, the first one of them that goes through, the door opens, a little bell chimes, and you hear uh, a happy greeting off in the distance. Uh, the four of them walk through, very familiar, kind of leave you behind just a little bit. Um, and as you pass through, you see that you're in some sort of storage room. There's uh, crates and boxes and looks like some sort of uh, uh, hemp sacks. And there is this wonderful smell. You smell bean water. <laughs> and bacon. And bacon. <laughs> and other sort of food smells that you've not smelled before. You, you, you caught glimpses of it when you were at the, uh, the, uh, the main camps in the mm-hmm. Tepetl Mountains. Um, but where that was just like warm, hot food, this smells like delicate and very, very much more sophisticated. Like there's, mm. you, you, you can definitely tell that there's a difference in quality here. Um, and looking at the backs of your companions, they all seem to be uh, gathered around in front of a much shorter figure with bright, fiery red hair. And he's just kind of greeting them all. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Uh, glad to see you're all well and good. I've only really been seeing Zon here of late, but still, he's told me everything that's happened. And uh, he kind of looks up at Brick and gives him a big, solid thump. Ow! Uh, hope everything goes okay with you, lad. Um, that's kind of why we're here. Tomorrow's the big day, so, um... Well, I'd be offering to get you rightly schnookered, but I don't think you can really, you know, process the alcohol like the rest of us, but everyone else... Drinks? Shmammered. You want to be shmammered. Mariko, Um, you want to be shmammered. I don't know what that is. As you you say... Sorry, Pez, you go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I'm I'm gonna refrain from the spicy water tonight so I can stay sober for the surgery tomorrow. Uh, yeah, that would be appreciated. And I kind of look at Fern and what I was about to say before he cut me off. Of, uh, Brick says, um, "I hope this isn't farewell tonight, but if it is, let's make it a good one." He kind of like cracks his knuckles and I'll whip you all up something lovely. And uh, he, <laughs> he pauses for a moment and he looks at Juzon and says, You said Moriko. That is Moriko. That van and Zorni. Well, hello there, Pank Thing. <laughs> Pank Home, Thing. Home, give us a look at you. She's going to hesitate and move a little forward, but she's like trying to stay near the others. Uh, Come, Moriko. He, he he's very mind. energetic, but. Uh, you, you instantly get that good good vibe nature off of him. He just is a, a good soul. And he's kind of like looking you over. He kind of like lifts your arm and is just kind of looking at your hand and your outfit and goes, aren't you just the cutest little thing I've ever seen? Apart from maybe the princess, but you didn't hear it from me. So, um, and he does like an elegant bow. I'm Fern. Welcome to me cafe. Slash butcher. Slash bounty. I'll feed you proper. And he kind of <laughs> goes goes off into the kitchen and you see him bustling about. Make yourselves at home. Is the so, princess here? You see the head pop out. No, you get. It's night time. You can always ask oh. if she can come by, though. You've got your little um. messagey thing, right? I think she should come over just so she can see another one of her kind, half kind. What? Oh, she's a she, half elf. She she she's like you, twenty years. Okay. <laughs> Let's just throw everything at Mariko. <laughs> yeah, culture shock. <laughs> you ever met royalty before? <laughs> Nope. Random sidebar. Mm-hmm. Can I roll for the additional bones that I found? Yes, really please. Quick? Okay. Um, so eleven and a six. So seventeen. Okay. Um, and it's just the 
one is that per day i rolled two if you if you think that you would go and look for more bones each day sure yeah she's gonna look for one more day so since it was a total of four and this would be something she would do like first thing in the morning okay uh, and then that's a five and a six okay so, so 11. okay so 11 plus 16. okay that's i needed to make sure i wrote that down yeah got a nice little bit bones. yes pez do you have something what no i was just saying a lot of bones um mm -hmm. Zon will cast Sending and ask Yvonne if she wants to come hang out. Just Yvonne? Don't want to invite the Demon King. Well, yeah, well, why don't I do that and I'll do the princess as well. No, no, don't do that. No, fuck that guy. The princess. And the princess and Yvonne, not the Demon King. <laughs> And the Demon King. <laughs> no. I was no, like, hey! <laughs> Pretty sure he was no, alive. Um, so Zahn sends out the message. Um, both messages. Um, you hear from Yvonne first. Um, I will see what I can do. I am currently scolding some of my charges. I sent another sending and let her know that Brick may die. I will scold them faster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, the next one you send was to uh, Princess... Yeah. Oh god, I'm always fucking it up. Cause... Yeah, the princess... Hold, please, as I scroll up and make sure. Uh, Emma. Names are hard. <laughs> well, because one of them is Enna, the other is Emma, because I'm smart. <laughs> uh, so it's you like some shit I do. Right. So you send one to <laughs> Emma. Yes. Okay. Uh, you get a reply back. Oh, um, I'm actually at a, a dinner. I think I can make it. You you hear her whispering back to you. I'll be there soon. <laughs> Brick may die. <laughs> it didn't seem like she needed much uh, en en encouragement or convincing. Yes, thank you. Um. So, um, a short while later, uh, if you all go and sit in the main room, um, Moriko, there's there's a normal square sized door from where you were talking to Fern and the others. And directly left of that is the kitchen where Fern is working. But when you go through the door, there's a nice, wide, open eating area. Uh, a big, um, mostly circular window. The, the bottom half is kind of leveled off as a windowsill, but it is circular the rest of the way around. And uh, around the side of that is a much bigger, like, round, kind of hobbit door kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and as you, it, there, it's it's really pretty on the interior because there's a lot of vines hanging down the, the curved wall. You're kind of in a domed room um, and there's vines hanging down on the inside. There seems to be little like glowing insects scuttling about since it is nighttime now. Um, uh, after a bit of time and just kind of conversing as Fern is cooking, uh, you do hear uh, a pair of voices outside, a uh, little, the sound of a gate door uh, <clears throat> a gate creaking open and then falling shut and the big round door uh, opens and the first one in you see is a very tall athletic uh, tabaxi woman that is holding herself in a very sort of prim proper regard uh, and as soon as she walks in the, the belt comes off with her weapons and she sets it off to the side uh, she sees Zahn, walks right on over, and she's much taller than him, so she bends down, picks him up off his feet, gives him a <clears throat> big old kiss, like, right on the mouth, carries him over to a seat, sits him down, and just, like, full arm around his shoulder, like, th this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying claim to this. <laughs> uh, and right behind her, as all this is happening, uh, you see a slightly blushing much much younger than all of you a uh, half elven girl utterly gorgeous uh she has 
gray hair, which is very unusual for someone of her apparent age. Um, currently wearing, uh, it's odd because she's wearing kind of like riding leathers or like just sort of normal travel clothes, but her makeup is pristine. She has jewelry in her ears and in her hair like she just came from the fanciest dinner that you could ever imagine. Um, but she like quickly dressed down to sort of blend in. Uh, and she's moving around to, to Brick and Kasumi and even Pez and is giving, you know, the little, little like side smooches and greeting them. Um, and then she kind of turns to you and she goes, oh, um, and she kind of gives like a very elegant bow. Hello, I'm Emma. <clears throat> and who, 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 who are you? Uh... <coughs> That was me, not Best. her. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Mor Moriko. A pleasure to meet you, Moriko. I love your complexion. Thank you. And she kind of leans to the side and she kind of sees your ears and goes, Huh. Never thought I'd see anyone quite like me. Except for me mother. But, um, where are you from? Uh, not sure where I'm from from, but I have lived for a very long time in the Tepetal Mountains. You see her kind of, like, lean back, eyes tilting forward as she's, like, mentally checking a map. She goes, oh, I didn't know anything but elementals live there. I survived. She kind of, like, leans back and looks at you and goes, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, come, come, tell me more, tell me more. And she, she like, kind of like how Kasumi had done before, she, like, grabs your wrist and, like, takes you and sits you down and sits right beside you and just seems to be wanting to have a very, very, like, uh, very detailed conversation. Um, it's kind of kind of going into a little bit of like what's happening with you, sort of explaining where you are and the kingdom and everything. Uh, she even lets slip that she is the one of the crown princesses of uh, the, the kingdom that you're currently in, which is uh, the kingdom of Harpermere. It's on the complete other side of the fucking world from where you c currently are, which sort of blows your mind just a little bit. Yeah, she's getting a little <laughs> overwhelmed. She's like She's starting yeah. to get the face of overwhelmed. <laughs> And uh, somewhere through all of that, uh, Fern comes out with food. Um, he has soups, stews, bread, meats, uh, anything any of you could possibly think of wanting to eat or drink. So long as it's within his ability, uh, he's able to do so. And it's uh, once the food comes out and everything, things become a little bit more lax. Jokes are thrown around. Uh, Yvonne is explaining to Zahn, like, what she was doing, basically disciplining some of the newer recruits and how, like, one of them had gotten caught uh, drinking a little too heavily the night before, so she was really running him through the ringer uh, today, like, just basically making the poor fucker sweat off the hangover um, and just kind of giving an update on everything that's kind of been happening and uh, eventually the food is eaten, the after-dinner drinks have been brought out along with some desserts, uh, you have never had sweets quite like this. It is amazing what he is able to make. Sweets quite sweets. like that? She ever had sweets in general? There are sweet things in nature, like berries and fruit. Mm -hmm. fruit. Mm -hmm. She could have legally acquired some stuff from travelers. <laughs> Strategically Ooh. transferred equipment to alternate locations. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um... But the evening does wind down. Is is there any sort of conversations anyone wants to have with, with Fern, Yvonne, Emma, the the rest of you? Um, Brick at some point does make it very clear to Emma, like, look, it might not be me after tomorrow. Um, like, making sure she understands just how grave the situation is and why they are celebrating the way they are. And, um, yeah, he's just like, I'm not trying to alarm you, but you should probably understand what's going on. Well, I do understand. Um, many leave our shores and never return. 
some incentive. And she lifts her hands, <clears throat> pauses for a moment, and then she goes to one of her ears and pulls off one of her earrings and she hands it to you. I, Princess Emma, command you to return this to me upon your safe thing. <laughs> she hands you the earring. There, I have decreed it, so it shall be done. By your command, my princess. <laughs> <laughs> San leads back in your boss lap. So if he dies, who's going to give it to you and if we go to jail if we don't? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pretend I didn't hear that and she just like picks up another piece of, uh, of of pie and just like very purposefully like stabs it and just <laughs> <laughs> I will add that Kasumi seems a bit quiet and at some point in time the celebration she does kind of sneak off to like a little corner mm -hmm. um, to a table that's kind of by herself and you'll just see the bones that she found just kind of spread out on the table. And she's got a dagger and she's just very intently focused and carving them. Okay. All right. Uh, so Kasumi is carving into the bones. Um, Mariko, Pez, anything? Mariko's social battery is very steadily draining. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I'll call it. Somebody gets a lot of beer. <laughs> She's never had beer. Um, I'm, I'm just going to chill, drink some coffee, eat some bacon, just just vibe, oh, eat yes. hamburger. What, is, what has Mariko tried? What would you have tried if it brought out? We can't let this slide. I'm gonna be on this just like Rick. I I will let you roll D20 at advantage as an overall enjoyment of the food Pie, and drink provided. Biscuits, sausage, ham, more Mashed ham, taters. taters. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, there were some things in there you didn't particularly like. There, there's um some of the tangier things or something that had just a little bit too much sauce on it, but uh, you were definitely able to find things that after tasting around and picking from other people's plates, you you, you found some stuff that you really liked. And I'll let you hey. kind of decide what you prefer to have. All right, that's mine. Get that back. <laughs> <laughs> you, start to re you start to reach for it and Yvonne just like grabs your hand and just like pulls it back. It's like, quit being greedy. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> so, if there's nothing else that anyone would like to do, oh, carry on. Uh, at the end of the night, whenever it's like, okay, people are ready to leave, it's it's the end of the night. Brick is going to pick up whatever drink is available, um, and it's like a toast to all of you. No matter who walks away from the forge tomorrow, know that um, I am thankful for everyone I have met. And especially for you three, and he looks at Kasumi, Pez, and Zan. Seb. I'm happy it was you on the train that day. And to Mariko, he's like, and of course, glad we could show you the rest of the world. As you say this song. That... That's it. I, I hope to see more. And I hope to see it with you. Zon is hanging from the drink you decided to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have my drink back, please? <laughs> drop, 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 sure. drop, drop. Cheers! <laughs> um, Emma has a smaller glass tumbler uh yvonne like zon has a big wooden uh tankard uh fern is kind of off uh to the side he's still kind of wearing his like kitchen smock schmock just in case uh someone wants anything else made but uh he's kind of like pez and is like drinking coffee so he uh he kind of lifts that um the toast has been made the evening wears on uh 
Yvonne is whispering sweet nothings into Zahn's ear, wishing that he was able to uh, stay for a little bit longer and not be in Fern's place, but in the end... There's a god in our front. (laughs) (laughs) We can hide in the bushes. Eventually, (laughs) eventually... Uh, everyone leaves. Uh, Yvonne being duty bound with the princess being out way past what should be allowed uh, vows to escort her back safely. The two of them leave. Fern is in the process of tidying up. Well, I wish you all the best of luck. And hopefully all you'll be seeing all five of you again soon. You'll be seeing someone. We shall see who that is. Listen here, Mr. Yeah. Doom and Gloom. <laughs> Don't be bringing that negative juju into my abode. Yes. If you decide you don't want to come back, Bricks, then we will mount you on Fern's wall. I mean, we ha- we do have the old body. <laughs> like old I would make like... a pretty, I would no, make I a could... pretty cool statue. Or I could turn him into a fantastic clock. <laughs> yeah. Or a bathroom sign. <laughs> the men's room. <laughs> right, joking aside, best of luck to you. Mm. See you soon. <clears throat> right. You all head back through the hallway. Uh, Mariko, you see that as those in front of you pass through their flat two-dimensional images seem to leave with them leaving the space blank Uh, you pass through the heat of the jungle hits you in the face like a brick again well like if yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) welcome to the jungle (laughs) Um, so you all take a long rest the next day comes. Mm. Oh. Mm. 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 The poor Kasumi goes to bed. Yes. She is going to her altar. Okay. And she is doing a rune casting. Okay, which one? She is going to do the 24 hour rune casting. So she is going to use. 24 of those bones. Um, A lot of bones. And I'll let you determine if you want to instant message me the results of the reading. But she is wanting to basically get a reading on how the next day is going to go. And if it's going to be successful. So with the omen casting, she's doing the 24 bones. Okay. Um, as the rest of you go off to your various rooms, break the library. Um, Pez, are you, are you on the sofa again? Are you Pez posing under the table in your usual spot? <laughs> I, I think I've evolved enough to sit on some sort of cushy fabric. Okay. Um, uh, Just Mariko, space I, on the couch. <laughs> Mariko, have you uh, been using the master bedroom like Kasumi offered, or where have you been sleeping the last little while? Which, she has which taken corner up have Kasumi's. you claimed? <laughs> she has taken up Kasumi's offer and is joining her in the bed. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you all go to your respective rooms... Uh, begin to bed down. Kasumi, you go to the altar uh, to perform your ritual, preparing all the bones that you were able to find, and it's literally every single character that you had available to you, and you besiege Shenshe for um, enlightenment of what the next day may bring. Lighting the incense, the bones are set as- are set out, um, all the runes glow brightly. Uh, they give off a very warm, comforting sort of glow. 
uh, far brighter than what you've seen before, uh, whether that be because you've been throwing them directly into the fire or uh, just because this particular casting is a different method with how many you're doing. Um, but you get a very comforting feeling about the next day. And uh, it's, it's sitting well in your chest that uh, good vibes, good feelings. And then towards the very end, the bones begin to splinter and crack and pop. And though you didn't throw them into the fire, there seems to be burnt parts to them. You get the sense that this was a good and bad reading. Now what parts were good and what parts were bad is a little bit unclear, but there is a good and a bad in the next 24 hours. Okay, I'm going to roll to see how it impacted me and I got a four. Um, with the intensity of the ritual and how many bones you would use and just trying to, with Shinshe's help, peering as far into the future as possible, um, once the runes begin to fade, you have a, uh, a mild headache right behind the eyes. Um, Oof. it's going to be a little bit difficult to go to sleep, but... It's kind of like a, a harsh caffeine headache, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Uh, something that you feel that a good night's sleep and maybe just a little bit more caffeine in the morning should be able to, uh, to handle, but uh, it's nothing overly detrimental. Okay. She's going to slowly gather herself, go back to the master bedroom, but instead of sleeping on the bed, she is going to sit on the windowsill Mm -hmm. in fox form and just kind of rest her head on a pillow just she is stressed <laughs> <laughs> she is stressed with a stress headache um and she tries her best to get uh, the amount of sleep that her body will allow her to get okay so if there's nothing else uh, the next day greet you all some of you slept well some of you maybe tossed and turned a fair bit uh, I'll kind of leave that up to you decide how your character may react to the the, uh, the stress and anxiety of the upcoming day um, Moriko you in your meditative rest see once again those glowing white eyes mm. off in the distance. Mm. I see. And they are in a tree line. And your own vision is getting closer, faster and faster and faster, until that elven face is right up against yours. And you can't look away. You were looking directly into those depthless white eyes. Mm -mm. And the briefest moment, you see a flash. Uh, oh, sorry. Hold on. I gotta find. Uh, you you see uh, a very very brief glimpse of water. A dock. And then your vision, just as rapidly as it approached, flies backward, and you sit bolt upright. You um, feel physically tired like you've been running uh your stomach growls even though you just ate until you were about to explode you feel just like you haven't eaten in days uh i need you to make a constitution saving throw for me please oh no okay five five uh, you suffer one point of exhaustion. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. Oof. Wherever your vision showed you, you, you have a very heavy sense of, of unease, of almost uh, desperation, even. Uh, the location does not look familiar to you whatsoever. It was some dockside town. 
and that's all you're able to glean from the vision. I don't like this anymore. <laughs> All right. The rest of you wake up. Mariko clearly appears to have not gotten much sleep. You are led down to the altar. Unless there's anything that any of you want to do, you are led down to where the process is to take place. All right, one, I got one last thing. Yep. Um, as we are being led down... Brick is going to kind of hang back a little and try to have Kasumi hang back with him. Like, still moving down, but just kind of behind. Um, and he's going to pop open his left arm, which is where he has the spell scroll, well, spell book cylinder, the cylinder he crafted a while back with the lens and jewels on both sides, and all the glyphs carved into it. Just in case. I would like for you to hold on to this for me during the process. She like holds her hand up towards you and she's like no. I I, I can't take that because I, I know that probably this could have something to do with how your thought process goes and you're very literal and you think about percentages and things and stuff happening and I don't want to speak it into existence. So. It's going to be fine. He, uh, he puts it back his arm, closes the hatch. Just know that, um, because today is going to go fine. If something ever does happen, retrieve it for me. There is, um, something on there for all of you. She gives you a very slow blink. You can tell she's, like, trying to hold it together. Like, she is visibly stressed where she's almost, like, vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> like, anxiety, like, vibrate. And she's like, okay. If that were to ever happen. But let's, let's be positive. Let's. Let's just say the nice things and the, and the things that are going to go well today. Let's only talk about those. Again, Brick's face is not able to form expressions, only kind of give uh, inklings of what actual is happening. It's just He just kind of tilts his head like, what are you talking about? Today's going to go just fine. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And she just turns and just she has she has almost like the lights are on, but no one's home. Look behind her eyes right now. <laughs> She's just like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> you are all led into the chamber where the constructed brick tube point oh is is laying and there's another table beside it. Tamale is standing there, and with his one arm, gestures for Brick to go and lay down. He just looks at all of you. See you on the other side. Pops up on the table. Lays back. This next part, I will need assistance with. Yep. Or Greer was the one to perform this, as he is more magically inclined than I. Oh. Nope. I ain't magical. I mean, I am, but... I look at the other really. three. <clears throat> Any sort of magic essence you may be able to spare to power the transference. 
you're, you're not looking for like a specific spell. You're just looking for magic dust, right? This has never been done before. We have sparked new life, not transferred old life to new. Our theory before was magic from those he knows well will help to anchor him. So maybe everyone put a finger on him and then put all your mind into him? <laughs> but I, I think that's you say so. what you do. <laughs> 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 He's also going to place Hamburger on Brick 2.0's chest because he is magical <laughs> manifestation of a god. On his magical butt. <laughs> <laughs> the boobies. <laughs> um, Kasumi is, is going to place one hand on her chest and it is right where the medallion is. Mm -hmm. Take a couple deep breaths. She's like, whatever you need. Those who are capable. He gestures to the empty husk at the moment where the other core is. Place your hands there. Smap right on the face. What, do you want the face? No, I'm just like, I'm just not sure what's up with that. Kasumi is right clear. over the chest. Mariko, next to hand putting, Mariko's putting a hand on like a bicep. And Kirsten, where are you putting your hands at? On the, the chest. Like next to Hamburger. Where where he was gesturing at where the central core is. <clears throat> Anywhere around that area then. <laughs> I will give the countdown. When I say go. I would recommend something strong. All right, hold one second. The, <laughs> the, the <laughs> hand, <laughs> Jamali's hand comes to you, Brick, and he makes sure that you were leaning down, uh, places his hand on your face, gives you a little, like a little pat on the forehead, and reaching over with a very quick succession of presses that you didn't even know were places to be pressed, your chest just what? expands <laughs> open. I mean, he made you. He knows yeah. <laughs> how to get in there. <clears throat> um, he places his hand, his big metal gauntleted hand, on your core. And he looks... Uh, so Mariko, Kasumi, and Zahn, Pez, are you doing anything? Uh... I mean, they're, my strongest magical item is either Shatter or Cure Wounds at third level. Now, is this expanding a spell slot, basically, outside yes. of... Yes. Okay. This will so not actually slot. casting that on top of him. I mean, sure, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure before I made my selection. <laughs> if, if you feel like a specific spell will be thematic and could be helpful this is the time to say so. Otherwise, you can just say that you are expending the mana for that level spell slot if you're uncomfortable with choosing a spell spell. Like, you know, if Zahn is going to go full like Dr. Frankenstein says, says, then that's one thing. But if you don't feel like uh, like Phantasmal Killer would be a great spell, then you can just say that you're expending ah! <laughs> Oh, yeah. If Brick's going out, Brick's going out in fucking glorious fashion. <laughs> Power word kill. For the third lever! No, sir, not the third lever! <laughs> so, you want to know what we're expending? Yes. Uh -huh. I'm expending a fourth level spell. Mariko? I am expending a sixth level. Oh. Zon? A sixth level with channel divinity. Oh. Blam! Uh, Pez. Uh, a third level, because that's all I can do, and Hamburger's going to help with a turd. <laughs> Jesus. But he's nervous. I shit on your corpse! <laughs> <laughs> I fart in your general direction. 
<laughs> um. Your father was a rabbit. <laughs> uh, and he smelled of carrot berries. Oh. All right. So as you all prepare your spells, Chamale has his hand on Brick's core, and he goes, three, two, one, now. And yeah. he crushes Brick's core with oh. his hand. And as you all, uh, I need all four of you to make Arcana checks. Arcana. Arcana. Moment of truth. Oh, oh god. I am at disadvantage. <laughs> no! I, am, I will say, since you were all doing it, it is at advantage, so Mariko, you would be at a flat roll. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Zahn, you seem excited. I uh, rolled a 29, natural 20. Damn. And that's good because the other one was a 3. <laughs> Any, any others? 18. 18. Kasumi? 16. 16. Pez? Oh, I'm in the middle. 17. Not bad, guys. Not bad. Okay. Uh, so, he crushes the core, and Brick's whole body convulses. The lights go out immediately, and every part of him just goes completely slack. The crushed core... Uh, the bluish magic that was contained within is seeping past his fingers and he watches it as it floats up into the air as the same time all of you are just fucking pumping some spells into that core Where? Uh, <laughs> uh, you all sit there for a moment you see all of your where especially like in Zahn's instance where he's using an actual spell um Whereas there was usually death and destruction, all of it seems to just get taken from you into the core. Um, it, it's a weird, it's an odd sensation. You're, you're feeling part of your energy leave your own arm. And you kind of feel just a little bit lethargic. Like you've, you've been holding something heavy up in the air for a while and you finally got to let it go. Um, the core itself flares brightly. Uh, the colors within swirling and intermingling. The blue f coming from brick seems to be going higher and higher into the air. You're all holding your breath, not sure what's about to happen. And the, blue, <laughs> the blue begins to come back and start to arc towards the new core. And as it starts to get closer and closer, it goes in faster, and it seems to just dart straight into uh, the multifaceted core. Like all the rainbow colors, it begins to dampen and change, where there's reds and blues and yellows and greens. Um, once the blue essence of brick goes into the core, it all seems to go first to blue and then to a greenish shade. And you all take a step back at the urging of Chamali. He's kind of waving you back with his one good arm. <laughs> and you all sit there for a moment. The core begins to look like it's spinning. It, the, the core itself isn't rotating, but the energies within that you were able to imbue into it is what's rotating around. And in a brief moment, there's silence, but for a soft humming. And the container around Brick's chest slams closed out of nowhere with a resounding clang. Ah, and his yes. eyes light up green. Where Brick was once slender and a more athletic build, what you have been working on is uh, slightly taller, more bulky, very much a heavier, sturdier build. And like fucking Count Dracula, it just... At the waist, and he just sits bolt upright. Well, not bolt upright, but he goes straight up. He begins to look around. Sumi grabs Zahn's hand and squeezes it as hard as she can. <laughs> it's like... 
She's, she doesn't say a word. She's just squeezing it. It takes like 10d5 damage. No, I do like one force, point force of damage. damage. <laughs> I am not strong. Listen here. This sounds like... Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> Let's it happen. It hurts. I can take the pain. Um, Brick looks at all the faces around. Seth. Greetings. Okay. I, I am data not found. It is nice to meet you all. Ah. Chichimac. That's not his name. Oh, Chimale. You see the turtle kind of take a few steps closer, head tilting so that his good eye is looking at him. And I'll also say, uh, at this point, you recreated oh, yeah, if you, a... Yeah, if you want to explain yeah. what you look like. Uh, you recreated um, the face mask of Brick, but you all see it slide away. <laughs> and there is a purely golden face. Very very well cut, very broad, like very sharp features, like really pronounced cheekbones, really sharp chin. Um, the best way I could describe it is very like Henry Cavill or Alan Richardson, that kind of uh, chin structure. And he's, it's the facets of the face are actually flexing very similar to how you were seeing the porcelain face of Gemini flexing. So he can actually make expressions and the, uh, Form and the former face that looked that was designed to look just like his uh, original face seems to be like almost like a face shield of sort uh, that uh, flips up and kind of not dissolves but disappears into the rest of him. We knew who are, it was a possibility. Who are all of you? Kasumi leaves the room. Wait, no, I was just fucking with you, stun. <laughs> she... Does Brick say something? Because she's leaving the no, room. No, that, no, that's what he says. He's like, wait, no, stop. I'm just fucking with you. Kasumi, hold one second. One no, second. it's a bad Kasumi. joke. As Zon, you were saying this, and there is a hammer that hits the, so <laughs> that hits the side <laughs> of Brick's head, and Chamale is over there having thrown a hammer at him. Deserve that. Uh, you take six <laughs> points of bludgeoning damage. I am tempted to summon an elemental on you right now. I'm attempting to shoot him in the head. So Listen, I think that we can all agree. Zon takes two steps closer. His fist glows with lightning, and he punches him <laughs> in the chest with storm strike. <laughs> Don't even care. First what leveling is, it. What is Kasumi doing? <laughs> when he blurts out as she's leaving, she stops. She doesn't turn to look at you for a second. She stays. She slowly turns and looks back at you. And then she just leaves. Mariko follows after Kasumi. You also take 10 points of lightning damage and are thrown 10 <laughs> feet off of the table. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to crawl up next to him on the ground just like slither next to him and tell him I know how you work and just crawl away oh, God. that is a threat <laughs> even Chamale kind of looks at you and gives like a slow shake of his head and he starts to slowly follow out after Kasumi and Mariko I just kind of look at Pez I, I'm gonna assume that was in bad taste. Extremely. You do yes, that again, I... I will clog your thermal exhaust port. To be fair, you asked the guy that eats bugs if something was in bad taste. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna 
follow the other people outside. And Hambeard is going to take another shit on you and then follow. <laughs> Zahn's not falling, going into the room. Zahn's going to walk over because you're probably not on a table and, you know. Oh, no, I'm still, like, lying on the ground. Just, well, shit. <laughs> and leads over. You may want to start thinking about your apology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what did we learn? I was just trying to lighten the mood. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I may not be the smartest person at, well, at all. Even I knew that it was in poor taste. Sorry. You don't have to apologize to me. Is it because you already punched me? Uh-huh. You're probably going to get another one of those later. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> And Zahn's just gonna, the table that he was operated on, Zahn's just gonna plop his fluffy butt up on there and just wait to see what happens. Just legs kicking like a child in the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. Well, Rick's gonna stand up, dust himself off, also realize how much easy, because it's been really hard to move in the body as that's been failing. So he's like, ah, oh, this is a lot easier. Also, I feel a lot better. I feel stronger. Thoughts for later. And then he's going to walk out to try to go find everyone. Well, the good news is you're going to have two weeks to think of your apology. <laughs> as we're going to end there for the evening. So thank you all no. so much for joining us through this entire process of finally getting Brick fixed. Woo. To some extent. At least been fixed. Hey. Hey, Brick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He encouraged it! I just want everyone to know that! He encouraged it! <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, again, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, hope you enjoyed. We will be back in two weeks to see how Brick manages to uh, dig himself further into this hole uh, and to see what lies in store for the Tempest going forward. Uh, next week, we will have Storm King's Chaos, which will be DM'd by... Zeke, don't worry. I'll make him regret what he did today. Uh, so, any other closing comments, questions, concerns? Join, join us in the Discord. Discord. Yeah. Join, join us, us in Discord. two weeks where we kick his ass before the bad guys do. And yeah, we, we have to build him a third body. <laughs> We're going to need to go get more cores. All right. <laughs> well, I hope you all have a great weekend, a great week, whenever you happen to be listening to this. And we will see you the next time we go live. So, good night, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Fools and Flagons podcast. If you enjoyed this past adventure of the Tales of Archeron, you can catch us live on Fridays at twitch.tv forward slash foolsandflagons.